Hello everyone, we're back. I hope you took a moment to uh, stretch out and just relax a little bit. Um, I took a moment to get something a little more cold and refreshing. And I hope you don't mind if I uh, have some right now. continue. <coughs> I leave the room with Kama and he leaves the tavern as I go to find Parfait and Dolora. The two of them are seated together in the, <coughs> in the reception, speaking in hushed voices when I arrive. They both pause to look up at me as I walk into the room. Ah, here's Dolora and Parfait. Well, well, if it isn't the princess, take you long enough to come see us. Parfait. Anise told us you were unharmed. We're glad to see you safe, princess. So, how about telling us what happened? When prompted, I tell them everything that transpired in the alleyway. The two listen and only exchange a solemn glance when I am done. Do you know something about all, all of this that I don't? Why would the witches be after me in the first place? Hmm. Dolora. You remember what we said about the Tenebrum corru corrupting witches? Well, those witches don't like seeing curses broken. They meddle where they can because they can. That is why I cast a glamour on you when you arrived here, so that you can remain hidden from magical eyes. <coughs> Excuse me. I did it to protect you. To protect me? I feel like there is more to this than they are hiding, but I do not think any amount of convincing will get them to say anything. Forgive us, Princess. We're not entirely sure what's going on either. Though if it was a human that captured you, you must be working with the witches somehow. Troublesome, to say the least. But we don't know the details yet. Give us some time to figure things out. Until we figure out who the man is and who he is working for, you need to have an escort with you out of the Machen at all times. Do you understand? And once you figure it out, you will tell me? The two exchange another look, which only makes me more frustrated. They are obviously keeping secrets. And right in front of me. Dolora, we'll tell you once everything falls into place. Hmm. Parfait. Don't worry, Princess. We would never let you be put into any put in any danger. Danger, huh? The silence is what ends our conversation. I make my make my way back to my room, feet heavy. I feel like a fly caught in a spider's web. I try my best to clean my mind as I return to my room. Oh, you have a nice uh, photo of Kama. And we're in the tavern section of the tavern. Uh, that's the way I think of it. The days go by slowly, and I make no progress with my curse. Kama is so busy with the nights today and Delora and Parfait are busy talking with Rumpel about his curse in his room. He said, Tonight is the perfect night to go and wander the town by myself. I need to see if I can find out anything about the witches and what is happening around the kingdom. Delora and Parfait are not going to tell me anything, and no one has wanted to take me out of the Machin since a kidnapping attempt. 
these thoughts spiral helplessly in my mind as I sit at the table. I have just finished working for the day and the activity in the machine is beginning to wind down. Gowan stands at the door as the last few customers leave the machine. Jurian is walking around the room to make sure that there are no problems. No, there's two men here. Two strangers. Out of the corner of my eyes, I notice two men pause halfway across the room to glance back at her. I can overhear their words from where I am. Man A. Shame that she's a knight, huh? She's the proud type. Too proud to let the man dote on her. Leaving shame indeed. But do you think if I tried to say something to her? Gollum. You too. Mm, the man is surprised. Gollum is suddenly standing between the two men. An uncharacteristically dark glare on his face. Man B. Is, is there a problem? Gollum. Doors are closing for the night. I'm going to ask you to please leave. No need to be so uptight, lad. We're on our way out now. The two men walk out, and Gowan stands in the middle of the tavern area, glaring after them. Lou said, He more or less pushed them out of the tavern. If Anise had seen that, she'd probably have scolded him. Jurian. Uh, Jurian is here. Gowan? You okay? Go on. Of course. Jurian, so you think you could fool me? I've known you long enough to know that something's bothering you. Neither of the knights seem to notice me here. If they do, they ignore me. Jurian is still looking insistently at Garland, who looks down at the floor. Is he going to say something to her? Gollum says nothing, though. He looks at a loss for words. Finally, Jorian reaches out and pokes his shoulder. And he looks up, startled. Still the same as always. The silent, watchful night. Only says things with certainty when he knows they're the truth. Even the princess is waiting for you to say something. Both knights turn to look at me, and Gollum seems surprised. I raise, an I raise an eyebrow at him, and he hurriedly looks away. Patrol is starting soon. I'll light out first. Okay, stay safe. Gala nods at her with a little smile before he leaves the tavern. Going to sleep soon, Princess? I was just going to head up. I stand up and get ready to move up to my room, but stop once more to look at Jurian. Did you hear what those two men were saying? Oh, well, um, Oh, about me being too proud or something? So she did hear them, but chose, to, but chose to say nothing. It doesn't bother me. They're right. No. <laughs> I've been independent for a long time, and I would never think about myself pledging. I would never think about pledging my safety to a man I barely know. I could take care of myself. Blunt to the point. Jurian was really admired for that honesty in the palace. The only other men I've trusted before are my fellow knights. Gollin most of all, since we've always been partners. She does not explain any further, and I decide that it's for the better. 
The sooner everyone has cleared out, the sooner I can leave the Mashen. Tonight is the night, the night I go looking for answers. Okay. Oh, we're outside. Oh, and she's wearing that cloak. It looks like a fair million or something. <laughs> looks really expensive. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure it doesn't stand out, stand out at all. Okay, and it's very dark, and it's uh, we're in the Hozier Glover region of the town, which is the uh, main area, I guess. Not the plaza, but the uh, the first area. Sorry, Kama. And this is Lucette thinking, but I can handle myself. I'm going to prove it tonight. I may not be able to fight, but I can still be cautious enough to not land myself into trouble. Still, I do not happen to hear much of anything as I am, as I am exploring the town tonight. I should have brought along some kind of weapon, but then I would have had to steal a knife from the kitchen. I am not a thief. Hours pass before I pass a tavern filled with knights. Deciding that I will at least listen to what is happening at the palace, I linger by the door, by the open door, and listen to what m the men are saying. Night A. I hear that young Fritz is having a hard time of it. Oh, I forgot all about Fritz. I feel bad for the lad. Even Sir Alcaster thinks he's gone mad. What? Well, he does talk, keep talking about a princess that doesn't exist. Oh, wait. Oh, so Fritz... Well, wait, Fritz knows about her? Oh, who's that surprised as well? Fritz still even miss me? But... But how? Even his father is growing weary of his babbling. Sir Mithros forced, on, forced him on break the other day. He didn't seem happy. Well, Sir Mithros must think he's crazy too. Poor Fritz. Hmm. Night B. Can you keep a secret? The knights look at each other, and I lean as close as I possibly can. Apparently the boy spoke some truth though Sir Alcaster doesn't quite believe it. He's looking for the daughter of the previous queen. Daughter of the previous queen? Hmm? Yeah? The witch had a daughter? He said, the previous queen? Are you talking about mother? How dare they call her a witch? Might be. Apparent apparently she did. Though I don't even remember, even remember such a girl. This is top secret stuff. I just happened to wrestle this out of one of those lackeys looking for her. What would Sir Alcaster need this girl for? I'm assuming she's dangerous, and that they want to get rid of her. Well, what? Okay. But I. Talking about me? Night A. I'm curious. How are we supposed to find this imaginary princess anyway? Does she have any features? Aye. They described her features. Last man anyone looking for her said she wore a special pendant around her neck. Hmm. Huh. I should get out of here. I turn to leave the tavern, but my cloak snags in the door and falls to the floor, tripping me up in the process. Oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> okay. I end up falling halfway into the tavern, where the chatter abruptly stops. Is this... oh, a lady. The knights that were talking approach me. One of them picks up my cloak. 
I knew that cloak was going to be trouble, I told you. I attempt to grab my cloak from their fingers, but they pull it away from me, and I stumble into one of them. Madam. He moves to, to take my hand, and then he stops when he sees my face. Her face. In a necklace. You think she was spying on us? Wh which? One of those. One of the knights grabs me by the wrist and pulls me toward him. He's far stronger than the man in the alleyway was. Unhand me right now. I am no witch. Then that should be no problem. We're just going to take you in, and if there's something. If there's some big misunderstanding, we'll repay you ourselves, miss. No, let me go. This behavior is not fitting of a knight. Come now, miss. Let's go back quietly. Oh, wow. Okay, I have to... I have two choices here. Either try to fight them or convince them. This is, no, I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to fight them, especially in a tavern full of a bunch of knights, so uh, let's let's try to convince oh how am I gonna convince them I have that necklace? Oh, I think I, she shouldn't be wearing that ne why would she be wearing that she should never wear that necklace outside of her clothes. I mean okay well I think she has a better chance to convince them so well she has no weapon just just like she said. The only thing she could do is try to surprise them, but I doubt that's going to work. So, fighting back is useless when I am uh, outnumbered. I have to try convincing them that I am not who I think who they think I am. You're mistaken, sirs. I happen to overhear your conversation, and assuming I am some imaginary princess is unreasonable. Knights look at each other. You know, she has a point. She re she was listening in in, our, in, our, in on our conversation. That's clearly suspicious. Did you not hear what I just said? I happened to overhear it. Nothing more. You are cloaked, as if you were trying to hide your features. Being out at night without a cloak is a sure way to draw attention to a lady such as myself. You know, she has a point. Stop saying that, man. Then, ma'am, there should be no problem with us taking you back to the palace. If we are mistaken, we'll clear up the misunderstanding and pay you handsomely. Oh, damn it. Come on, let's take her to the palace. The knights lead me out, out to, onto the empty streets. Why? Why do they have to be so stubborn? The knights continue pulling me down the path until we come to a narrow street. Everyone who sees us walks away to avoid the knights. There is fear in their eyes. Well, I have done nothing wrong. Ma'am, if it makes you feel any better, we're, we're, we're risking our rank on this as well. I don't know. I'm suspicious of... Who goes there? Hmm, somebody appeared. The shadowy figure, it looks sort of like... Looks sort of, yep, it looks like Karma. I look up and notice Karma's familiar figure walking toward us, you know. He said, what is he, what is he doing here? And why is he in his, his, his disguise? Karma. Gentlemen, I asked that you wouldn't hand that woman as a knight. I would be ashamed to be seen treating a lady so terribly. And who are you? Her husband. Is what? <laughs> That's Lucette. <laughs> Unhand her, gentlemen. I taste my blade. 
Knight A. Ah, uh, sir, we were just going to take her to the palace, too. I will give you on the count of three. One knight keeps his grip on me as the other draws his sword. I stare at Kamo, who continues to count, though the knight attacks him before his sword leaves his sheath. Kama and the, and the knight trade blows, but it is Kama that comes out victorious. His blade slides past the knight's shoulder to shrack him enough to give Kama, Kama the opening he needs. Kama reaches back with his free hand to knock the knight out with a blow to the head. It may just be my, my imagination, but for a few moments, I think I see the knight's blade glimmer across the surface of Kama's hand before he falls. Hmm. The knight holding me holds up his hands at surrender. I yield, sir. It seems no matter how the situation turns out, you are dishonorable. P please, sir. Oh. <laughs> Gaman knocks him out, then stands beside me as he sheathes his sword. Well, that's what he gets. Come on. A few moments, Lucette. Hmm. Kama spends some time forcing a potion from a vial down each of the knight's throats. <laughs> She's <laughs> he's giving her the uh, the knights the uh, I think he's uh, giving the the one that makes him sound like woman. I watch him quietly, <laughs> fearing that he might have killed them. But the, but the knights only seem to be asleep. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that would have been... Okay. A, po a potion that Parfait gave me. It would make the men forget they ever saw you. Oh, I think my idea would have been funnier. <laughs> if they were walking around talking like women. But, okay. When Karma stands again, I notice the glimmer of blood on his hand and stare... You're hurt. It's nothing. I'm sorry. Come on, princess. Let's go back. Hmm. He pulls me right out on, onto the main street and does not let go of my hand. I cannot bring myself to speak. Kama has saved me twice now. Not only that, but this time he's injured. He says it's nothing, but his hand, but his bloody hand does not move at all. Hmm. Why do I have to be so stubborn and insist I can handle myself? I do not speak for a long time. Oh, well, uh, okay. There, there are two little kids here. Huh? Eventually, I notice people start to stare. Whoa. Okay, there's a lot of people here. And yeah, they're staring. Though before long, the staring grows worse. Young women begin following us, giggling from behind. I turn to Kama, who looks like he hasn't slept in days. Kama? Sorry, princess, but I'm not in the mood to talk. Those girls are walking right behind us. This is... His curse? Oh. <laughs> oh, they're all following uh, Kama. <laughs> oh, that's right, because he's he's in his man form. All these women are... No. Oh, okay. Kama. You said... I just said that I have no mood to talk. Did you not hear me? We're being followed. He stares behind us, almost stupidly, and then laughs hollowly when the girls see his face. They start to rush toward us, their voices rising and blending together into a horrendous cacophony. Kama is not moving, though. He looks resigned. 
Maybe he is too tired to realize what he wants to do. I tighten my grip on Kama's hand and pull him away, my pace quickening to a run as the girls chase after us, screaming at me angrily for taking Kama, Kama away from them. Well, oh, God, okay. This curse is pretty bad. I thought it was, you know, I didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was just, uh, you know, the woman uh, sends him letters or something. But Who said? What are you doing? Getting us out of here. Who said? I lead him through the town and into little nooks and crannies where we manage to lose some of the crowd. Kama often led me through some of these spaces as shortcuts. Waltz knew of them too. Once we are alone again, I stop, falling to my knees and letting go of Kama's hand as I catch my breath. That really was a curse, having to run away from so many mindless women. That was difficult. Who said? What? I do not mean to snap, but the tiredness is pressing on me too. You helped me out of that. Of course I did. Why would I want to be chased by girls? You could have left me behind and gone on all alone. Instead, you helped me. You helped me too. I, you helped me too. I guess I paid you back. Though to be honest, I wasn't even thinking about repaying him for saving me. I just knew that I didn't want comedy to be stuck trying to fend off all those girls. He was right about his curse. That is terrible. I just realized something. Kama kneels down beside me and waits, and waits for me to speak. My curse says people forget me, and yours has even strangers become fascinated with you. It's almost like our curses are our opposites of each other, and yet, yet, Yet we seem so similar. My eyes widen when I realize what I just said. We are similar, aren't we? He holds out his good hand to me, and I let him lead me back to the tavern, through the abandoned alleyways. My feet are heavy, and all I want to do is sleep. But suddenly Kama is standing before me, his face grave. Who said, I have to thank you for helping me earlier. I'm sorry I froze like that and made it more difficult on you. It was so sudden and I was so tired I had no motivation to move. Shouldn't I be thanking you? I'll accept your thanks even though I wish you didn't have to thank me in the first place. You should not have gone out on your own when you knew how dangerous it could be for you. I am sorry. I'll accept your apology too because I lost sleep over this. I have no words for how I feel right now. Princess. A very pretty picture of uh, Kama in his man form kissing uh, Lucette's hand. And she seems uh, quite surprised. Kama reaches for my hand again, and this time he holds it up and kisses the back of it. Suddenly, all of my tiredness falls away. Kama, you really are a handful. but a delightful handful. I'm going to bandage, th bandage this hand and then rest. We'll speak later about all of this, okay? But the blood... The bleeding stopped on its own, he said. 
but it does need to be treated. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Are you sure? As sure as I can be. I don't lie, not even for the sake of a pretty lady. Hmm. Now we're back in the tavern. Karma lets my hand go as soon as we enter the Mashen, and then bows politely to me before heading back to his room. I watch him go, my mind whirling. Does he usually kiss women's hands? No, Lucette was blushing. No, I don't think so. Chapter 6 Matchmaking. Okay, so on that note, we'll stop here, I think. Oh, wait, you know what? Let's go through this. Now, this is a little flashback of, uh, I'm assuming we sat thinking. No, you know what? We'll leave it here. We'll keep this flashback so we can reacquaint ourselves with the story. So. And uh, remember what happened. So, I'd like to uh, thank everyone listening. And uh, I hope you're safe and things are okay with you. And uh, I hope you join me again. And we'll continue on and see what's going on. Maybe there's a little budding uh, feeling for, for Lucette from Karma. I don't know. But we'll see more. And uh, good night, good evening, uh, good afternoon, uh, goodbye. <laughs>